Hello and welcome back to the SysNav training series. In this video, we're going to walk through the AIM module within System Navigator. AIM stands for Array Installation Modeling. And with AIM, users can position virtual L-class loudspeakers and arrays within a scaled graphical model of the venue or installation space. This visualization is very helpful in determining the placement, down tilt, and splay angles of your L-class array. This tool is paramount for getting the maximum performance out of your system and should become a regular part of your workflow for any deployment, whether it be a full-flown array, two loudspeakers on a pole, or anything in between. Let's go ahead and jump in and see how it works. To access AIM from the SysNav home screen, press the Menu button and select AIM on the menu. On the AIM screen, you have two sections. The Edit Workspace section on the top half of the screen and the Venue Model on the bottom half of the screen, which gives a visual representation of the venue space. In the Edit Workspace, you can toggle between editing the venue parameters and the array parameters. On the right side of the screen, you will see options to save or load an existing AIM file with the button titled AIM Files. The Venue section works by entering listening zones or what we call audience areas in the venue model. We have a default AIM listening zone that auto-populates labeled Stage. This is just a starting point that AIM gives you. Taking a look at the default stage zone, we can see that the left end of the stage is positioned at zero feet, meaning it lines up with the far end of the overall venue space, and it extends 15 feet from there. We can also see that the stage is four feet tall with no incline. The first thing I'll do is simply shorten the stage a little bit. I'll tap on the right end field and adjust this to 10 feet. Notice that change was reciprocated in the venue model. All right, let's go ahead and add our first listening zone. We'll do this by pressing or clicking on the plus symbol. And just like that, we have a new audience area, which we can see represented in the venue model below. Let's begin by giving this a name. Tap or click the name box and a text field will appear. I'll get creative and name mine audience one. You can name your listening zones whatever makes the most sense for your venue and setup. Once we've typed in the name, we'll hit apply. Now let's enter the dimensions of our zone. This is where some measuring may be necessary on your part, or Dimensions of your space may need to be obtained. AIM has gone ahead and predetermined the location and length of this zone. Let's adjust it to match our actual zone location. For my theoretical venue, I'll start my audience area right in front of the stage. I'll set the left end field at 10 feet. Now let's say the audience area is 50 feet long. I'll set the right end field to 60 feet because 50 plus our 10 foot starting point puts us at 60 feet. You know, math. The height of the entire zone is set to zero, which would represent the ground. We'll pretend that the floor area of our venue is a general admission ballroom style area meant for a standing audience. We'll set the ear height to standing so we can get a general visualization of where the ear height of our audience will be. This will be helpful when we begin to aim and splay the array. Specific sitting and standing ear height values can be entered in the preferences screen. All right. Now just for visual scaling purposes, I'll also adjust the overall venue depth to 80 feet. This is looking good. Now let's toggle over to the Edit Array screen and define our array deployment to get the best coverage in this room. In the Array Editing section, we have parameters and controls to define the physical attributes of the array and its deployment. In the center, we can see a dynamic visual representation of the array. If we want to give the array a unique name, we can do that in the top field. In the next field, we can choose between the LA-108 or LA-112 line array loudspeakers. We'll go ahead and stick with the LA-108 for this example. In the next field, we can choose the number of loudspeakers in the array. I'm going to change this to four boxes. The next field is where we can set the deployment type. If we click in here, we can see options for flying, ground stack, and tripod stand. I'm going to leave mine set to the flying option. Now, we can use the remaining fields to position the array within the venue and adjust the tilt and splay angles. The goal is going to be to make sure that our array deployment covers the entire audience area. Now, a major benefit of using line array versus point and shoot loudspeakers is that a line array has the ability to cover a much larger audience area much more evenly, ensuring that everybody within that audience area has more or less the same listening experience. This tool will show us what our array coverage looks like as we adjust it within the venue, and we can use this so we know exactly how to set it up to maximize the coverage and take full advantage of the line array. Let's start by lowering the array from its default 35 foot trim height. Let's take it down to 20 feet and use that as our starting point. When determining your trim, you'll have to be aware of the physical limitations of your venue. 
what is the overall ceiling height and what is the maximum hanging height that can be achieved in this venue? If the truss or hanging structure in the venue is only 20 feet, then you clearly will need to keep your array below that height. My venue here is completely made up, so I can do whatever I want. We'll change the X position to 10 feet, setting the array in line with the front of the stage. But again, you'll need to set this according to your physical space and where the array will be positioned relative to the listening zones. As you're moving the array around in space, the array position indicators will display the distance of the array from all nearby surfaces based on the pick point location, which is what we are manipulating with these controls. You also have the option to toggle on the XY clearance indicator, which will show you how far away the array is from the nearest surfaces based on the closest points of the array to those surfaces. Now this is where we can start to have some fun and figure out what the best tilt angle will be along with the specific splay angles between all of the boxes to achieve the most coverage throughout the listening zones. We're going to use two things to determine our best coverage. We have the visual aiming lines that will show us where each loudspeaker is pointing and what the split coverage looks like between all the loudspeakers. And we also have the SPL meter in the middle of the screen here. The SPL meter will display the predicted SPL level for the model venue and array. The color of the frequency response line matches the color of the corresponding area. Notice the measurement line above the audience area matches that in the SPL meter. If you add more audience areas, you get more colors. The specific frequency being modeled can be selected with the SPL frequency option here. We'll talk more about this as we adjust our model. The simplest way to set the tilt and splay for your array is by using the auto splay feature. The auto splay feature will automatically determine the best down tilt and splay angles throughout the venue to achieve the best coverage for your audience zones. Let's go ahead and press that now and see what happens. All right. Instantly, we have a down tilt and splay set throughout the array. Let's now toggle on the coverage indicator here. If we toggle this on, we can see dotted lines representing the approximate area where the array coverage drops below 6 dB on the top and bottom of the array. If the audience areas remain within these dotted lines, we know we are still within the coverage pattern. This is looking good. Now taking a look at the SPL meter, we can see that we are currently modeling 1K. And the coverage is looking good. Ideally, you want to have this as even as possible throughout the audience zone or zones if you have multiple, typically within plus or minus 3 dB. The SPL will default to 1K because that is typically around where the vocals are going to reside. Making sure 1K is as even as possible will be most helpful in making sure you achieve good vocal intelligibility. Now, if we want to dive in and model additional frequencies, all we have to do is click or tap on the frequency indicator and select a different frequency. Each is modeling a three octave range with the indicated frequency as the medium. Let's take a look at 8K. If things look good at 1K, and we also have even coverage up at 8K all the way to the back, you can be sure that you have good vocal clarity and intelligibility throughout the entire audience area. This is looking pretty good, and if we were to deploy it just like this, we'd get a pretty good result. Let's see if we can fine tune it a little bit, however. We do have a little bit of coverage in the front of the stage that we could try to improve. Let's start by lowering the array just a little bit more. We'll take it down to 15 feet. Now let's take a look at the splay angles and make some adjustments. To adjust the splay angles between the loudspeakers, we can do so right here in the splay angle section of the array edit workspace. Let's adjust the first angle from 1.5 degrees to six degrees to open it up a bit more. Another thing we can do here is adjust the high frequency shading in the loudspeakers if necessary. This will allow us to increase or decrease the high frequency output specifically within each loudspeaker in the array to fine tune the total coverage of the array. We can choose to adjust either 1.5 or 5K and then boost or cut the gain for that frequency within each loudspeaker. If you aren't getting quite enough high frequency response all the way to the back of the audience, you can come in here and increase that in the top of the array or vice versa. Maybe the people in front who are closer to the array are getting too much high frequency. You could pull that out of the bottom of the array to better balance the coverage in the total array. All right, now that we've adjusted the display, let's refine the overall down tilt. We can adjust the down tilt of the array using the down tilt field. If using a multi-point pick point, you have the flexibility to set this angle to whatever you want. If you use a single pick point, however, you can click in this menu and it will show you what the down tilt angle will be depending on which pick point you use on the array frame. We can also grab one of the aiming lines and drag it up or down to adjust this. It's more fun, but a bit less accurate. 
And after moving it around a little bit, I'm pretty happy with the coverage at negative 15.5 degrees. That's looking really nice. Awesome, and we're good to go. I can now set this up in my imaginary venue. And that covers the AIM module within System Navigator. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.